Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do something a little bit different for you today. Um, now you may remember around Christmas time I was gifted this book, Carving the Little Guys by Keith Randich. Um, and I've been doing some, uh, some of the stuff out of this book for a little while now. I'm certainly by no means proficient or very good at it, uh, if truth be told. Um, but it's something I'm quite enjoying doing. It's a little bit different outside of what I would normally do. Um, and essentially what you're doing is you're taking a little small square section piece of wood like this uh, and turning it into something at least vaguely resembling one of these. Um, now what I'm, I'm thinking of doing, um, you know, this is really just an introductory video to have a quick chat about this upcoming project. Um, and what I think I'm going to do is there's a lot of detail involved in this and rather than doing one long video trying to show you how to make one from scratch, I'm going to break it down into the individual stages. Um, that way, you know, I can go into a bit more detail without having a really long running video. Um, and also, you know, if you want to sort of carve along with me, so to speak, um, you know, because this is dry or seasoned wood, um, you can do a bit of carving on it, put it away, leave it for a week or a month or however long you like, come back to it um, and you're ready to go. You're not going to worry about it splitting or cracking or anything like that. Um, so that's my plan. Um, I'll bring you in just a little bit closer in a second. So what I thought I'd do is just give you a quick introduction into what I'm going to be using for this, just so you can have a bit of an idea maybe if you want to start putting something together like this yourself. Um, as we go along, I'll show you more things. As, you know, things, I won't show you all the strops and the sharpening stones and all that today, but just a, a real sort of fundamental idea of what I'll be using. Um, and the short answer is you take a small pocket knife like this, um, you can do this entire process just with a pocket knife. And that's what I like about it. As I say, it's something a bit different to what I normally do, um, but it's actually something you can just sit down of an evening time on the sofa um, and just do a little bit of carving, put it away. It's not like making a bowl or a spoon where you have to do quite a lot of initial work before you get to a stage where you can put it to one side. Um, so that's my plan, guys. That's, that's what I'm thinking of doing. And either you can follow me along week by week or you can wait till the end of the series um, and kind of get all the stages in one go. So I'm just gonna move the camera just a little bit closer in and I'll show you what it is I'm gonna be using. Right then guys, well I've had to play around with the camera angles a little bit, um, I may change these as the series goes on, but hopefully you can see kind of what I'm doing here. Um, so to start off with, we have our piece of wood, obviously quite fundamental for this project. Um, and this is a one inch by one inch by two inch piece of pine. Um, I've got a ruler here which I'll be using later on, but just to show you these dimensions, which hopefully is picking up on the camera there, you've got a two inch by one inch, by one inch. Um, and those are the dimensions that are recommended in the book. That will give you a good sort of all round size and shape. Um, as I say, I have a ruler just for sort of help with marking out and that kind of thing. Um, a pencil, which I've, I've found really, really easy. You don't need it, you can do it by eye. Um, but I find just marking certain spots on here just gives you a bit of, a, bit of something to aim for. Um, and then really, all else we need is a knife. Now I've got my lovely little Mora Eldris just here, um, which has been really useful with this type of carving. I've also got a selection of small pen knives here. Um, this one is the one that I'm favoring at the moment. So you've got this blade here, which is a nice long sort of, um, sort of t almost toothpick blade. Um, and then you've got two smaller blades. Um, if I can get this other one out here and here. Um, and these are really, really nice little blades for sort of taking off smaller bits of carving and stuff like that. Um, I've got a standard sort of canoe pen knife. Um, you know, you've all seen this kind of thing before. Swiss Army knives are also really good. Um, mine's actually packed away in my belt kit. Um, but again, if you've just got it in your pocket and you're out for the day and you want to do a little bit of carving like this, you know, they're absolutely ideal. Um, and I've got this one, which I'm also favouring at the moment. It's a very small... Um, and hopefully you can see, if I can get this lined up, right, it's a very thin blade on this, um, which is useful for kind of picking out little bits of detail. Um, but to be honest, if I had to pick just one knife, it'd probably be this one. Um, the Mora will do it at a pinch, but because it's got quite a wide blade on it, it does sort of um, suffer a bit for the fine detail. Um, and then obviously we've got the book here. Now I'm not going to be taking you through it page by page. Um, I'm slightly unclear on how the copyright um, thing works. So I'll just be doing the step by steps kind of of my own showing you along. 
Um, other thing I wanted to show you was this. Um, now I may or may not use that. I've not used this for, for these type of carvings yet. Um, but this is basically just a little sort of uh, hobby craft knife set uh, made by Silverline. Everyone's probably familiar with them. And you get kind of these kind of blades on the little handles of interchangeable blades. Uh, very, very sharp, um, something akin to kind of scalpels. Um, and they're, they're very, very sharp, very, very good. So I may break those out when we come to do some of the detail stuff. So there you go guys, that is my plan for this little upcoming project. Um, I hope it's something that's going to be of interest and something that people will maybe uh, feel sort of inspired to try themselves. Um, next video we'll make a start um, on some of the initial shaping. Um, and again, I'm going I'm to try and keep these videos really, really short. I mean, this one's run on a little bit longer than I intended, but you know, I want to take you through on a real kind of step-by-step -step process, as I say. And you know, you start off smoothing over and rounding off the top, then you bring some cuts down from the bottom, and so on and so on and so forth. Um, and provided it's not too short, um, I'm going to try and dedicate one video per sort of action if you like. Um, if they are too short or, or people aren't that interested in them then I'll maybe incorporate you know, two or three different steps. Uh, but we'll just see how it goes from here. Um, so as I say guys, hope it was useful. Hope it's something that's going to interest you. Um, you know, please do mention in the comments if, if it's the kind of thing you want to see or if it's not. Um, and as I say, you know, I, I haven't sort of finished one of these to completion yet. Um, so that, that's kind of another reason for me doing this because this is going to kind of prompt me into at least completing something in its entirety. Um, so that's it guys, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.